boards up and see if we can come in uh, and if we can lay this on you. Uh, first of all, I have to make sure I can thank everybody for joining up today. Uh, for those of you that I haven't met, uh, Colonel Ryan is a brand new vice chief mayor. Uh, so welcome today. Uh, we'll introduce some of the, uh, the, the people from uh, Belfort Bank that you guys here in a second. You guys, the scope today is for uh, our new partners and our family houses to give you a brief on exactly what we're going to be doing as we turn over our family housing uh, in this privatizing economy. So, we've got a brief that uh, they will give, so I'll ask you to, to uh, sit back and, and listen to the brief first. And there'll be plenty of time after the brief uh, to ask questions. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, privatizing is a part of airports that's been around for a while. Believe it or not, we're one of the last cases. To actually, to actually get privatized. Uh, Balfour Bay is the company that we're going to be partnering with. They've won the Northern uh, Northwest contract. Uh, these guys come to us with a great reputation. Uh, your leadership, leadership team here at Mount Home has met with these guys. I think you're very impressed with, uh, uh, with the team. Uh, it's here today to answer questions, and I think we're going to be I'm really excited and looking forward to, uh, to partnering with these guys as, as we move forward with the, uh, with the privatized. There are a lot of things that they're going to bring, uh, bring forth. We're going to cover some of those things today. Uh, the first thing I'll tell you is right now we're on track for this to happen on the first of August. Okay? What happens is it's actually a real estate deal. Uh, and so the team that was here with Mount Homer actually wanted to see that suite of products. Uh, so the expectation that we're looking at is for this to happen on the first of August. Uh, so that's it's, it's really quick. It's right around the corner. Okay? Uh, with the program, there's going to be a lot of improvements that these guys are going to bring. So we'll talk today uh, about how, that, how that's going to happen. It'll be very seamless for you to give you some of the backs out of this. Uh, I think you're going to see some improvements, uh, not only in the housing, but in the amenities and the things that are going on uh, behind the base housing uh, here. Uh, I will bring up, we had a meeting this morning with some of the key leaders. Uh, there's probably some angst for those of you family members that may be here that have the toy spouses that are downrange. We will work with you individually and make sure that that is as seamless as possible the housing office as well as our Balfour Baby uh, teammates have already started that process. We can follow it up uh, if you've got any questions to get to the brief today. We've got that uh, in mind. So today's focus is to get the information to you so you know what's going to happen when this uh, privatization uh, lease slash sale happens. Uh, and it's the opportunity for you to ask questions uh, of the experts that are here uh, so you make sure that you walk out and know exactly what's going on. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce Mr. Dan Frederick uh, from Balfour Beatty. And Dan, I'll let you introduce your teammates, whoever you, whoever you would like to. Uh, and on behalf of Colonel Short and the Gunfighters of 366 Wayne, welcome aboard. And we look forward to working with you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for coming out today. Um, I know everybody's time is short and um, a lot of information to go over. So what I'm going to read is the development portion, uh, what exactly we're going to do construction-wise, where we're going to do that, and time. Um, our area community manager, Amy Lentz, she will be briefing the operation side that has to do with, you know, moving about uh, leases, housing, um, the operation side of the facility. And all that stuff. So, appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, with that being said, I won't take up too much of your time, so we'll get to the development brief. This is an overall site plan. Basically, um, outlines what we're going to do, where we're going to do. It's tough to see the next slide I have to break down for a parcel. Um, long and short of it is we're going to knock down 371 units, we're going to build 60 new units, and we're going to renovate three. Um, the 60 new units are a mixture of 40 JNCO and 20 CDO. So there's the overall site plan. Phasing schedules, you can kind of get a feel for what we're going to do um, per housing area. Parcel B, Eagle View, gets demolition. Schedule still PDD on that. Um, Safe Rush View is where the 60 new homes are going. <coughs> Start construction on that basically immediately. So as soon as we, as soon as we close, essentially, these uh, one on the um, construction of the 60 new homes will start immediately. Desert Sky States, uh, no construction, and same with Gunfighter Manor, but we are upgrading uh, some biofence. 
Gunfighter Circle, we are renovating three uh, existing SOQ homes with the digital garages. Time frame for that is uh, July 14th start date and an estimated completion date of November 14th. Coyote Terrace, no construction. Trinity Heights, there's a maintenance building. The estimated start date is, again, basically immediately after we close. Estimated completion date is August of 14th. And uh, demo of the laundromat and TLFs will start in August of 2013 and should be wrapped up by this uh, September. Falcon Estates gets 108 demo, um, demo of the 44, uh, 4401 building and a new community center. The new community center will start construction immediately and that should be opened um, roughly around August 2013. Those are the phasing schedules for the development. This is an overview of what the new 60 is going to look like. The blue are the JNCO and the CGO are in purple. So just give you a feel of what the overall site might be construction will be. New home features, um, common features, three and four bedrooms. Uh, there are two JNCO four bedroom ADA adaptable units, um, six CGO four bedroom ADA adaptable units, and the rest are three bedroom. You can see the size of the uh, CGO ranging from 1900 to about 2200 square feet. And, uh, the James E. Oak questions. This is uh, basically the architectural overview of the community center area and what it will look like when it's done. You can see you've got tennis courts. Um, it's a, I mean, it looks like a volleyball court there, too. This is the overview of the new maintenance facility. It doesn't really show a great picture of where it's going, but it shows, you know, what it's going to look like from above the parking lot, etc. The new community center um, will have a fitness center, we'll have meeting rooms, we'll have a multi-purpose room. Um, it has computer rooms as well. Yeah, computer rooms as well. And again, that should be complete by roughly September 2014. And this is the conceptual floor plan for the JNCOs. <coughs> and the same for the CGO units. <coughs> uh, for this base, renovations and enhancements uh, include new six foot vinyl fencing upgrades and new areas that I discussed earlier. Smart utility meter and gas and electric for all. Uh, individual houses on base. And the second garage added the three existing SOQ homes. Is that right? The community enhancements, um, these deals we like to, you know, we like to create a sense of community. And uh, by adding some of these things to the existing community and to the new areas, it really brings together that sense of community. Um, we're going to add multi purpose community center, as I touched on earlier. Five new top lot playgrounds, um, six group picnic areas, four tennis courts, four sand volleyball courts, uh, covered bus shelters, a soccer field, and a, and a baseball field or a ball field, whatever you want to call it, and a mile of trails and walking paths. And that concludes the development portion um, of the group, so appreciate everybody's time. I'd like to call up Amy Lance, the area community manager for Northern Group. I always get to talk about these and they have this fun stuff. So that's a hard act to follow. This is just an organization chart for Mountain Home, starting with um, our vice president of community management, John, myself, the area community manager for the Northern Group. Um, as Colonel Anderson had stated earlier, we are Mount Hope is part of a group of six other or group six bases a part of of that group. We've got Mount Hope, Ellsworth, we've got Grand Forks, Minot, and Cavalier, as well as Cannon Air Force Base. And we've got Amanda and then of course her team on board as well. Frequently asked questions. Please agree. Term of release is 12 months. After the end of the 12 months,
balance will go on one time. When will you sign your lease? Right now, we're actually conducting the lease signings. All leases need to be signed by August 1st. Um, you can contact the community management office and please stop in and schedule a time that's convenient for you uh, to sign that lease agreement. will have to sign a lease agreement even if you are moving in 2013. It's a legal document that protects both yourself as well as South Virginia communities. And how will we sign the lease agreement if the military member is TDY? Power of attorney, special power of attorney for privatized housing listed. Um, we will work with you though. In the event that um, we don't have those power of attorneys with the privatized housing, you know, let us know. Uh, we will work with you to get the uh, lease agreement to the military member if they're out in the field. Um, but we want to uh, make that as seamless as possible for you. Bring your LES with you when you need to sign, please. Your information, personal information, will definitely be kept private. What happens if you get orders? The lease agreement provides um, has provisions for termination um, of your lease agreement if you're going to be gone for uh, in excess of 90 days. 30 day notice is required. The lease will become voluntary. If you decide to break the lease for any other reasons, it's covering your grandfather within them. So all current residents will have a grandfather within them that will allow for that lease breakage or lease breakage. Excuse me with a 30-day notice and no penalty or a lease right to you. What will your rent be? The rental lot will equal uh, BAH with dependent rate. How will you pay your rent? By allotment. We, we partner with a um, company called MAP, Military Assistance Corporation, and you will see that allotment on your um, LES. If both spouses are service members or mill to mill, what happens? Um, you will pay the VAH independent rate for the higher ranking spouse, and the other military member will actually collect the VAH in your LES. A lot of our residents like that. Will it show on your LES? It actually will show as an entitlement, and then it will show as an allotment to take out, so you will see that. Will you have to pay tax? The age is not taxable. Will it impact nutrition programs? It's not considered income and will not affect those programs. Utilities. Right now, all utilities are included in your VH allotment. Obviously, the, the cable, phone, internet are not included. Um, individual electric and gas meters um, are being planned as the development starts. Will you have to pay utilities in the future? Um, <coughs> utilities, including the electric, gas, water, and sewer, are included. Once the uh, homes are equipped with the meters, consumption will be tracked for one year, and mock bills will then be provided for you after the baseline is established. Once we go live with the billing, if your consumption is greater than that baseline, you will have to pay the overage. If it's under, you will actually get money back. Um, it's really a great conservation promotion. A lot of times when you actually are responsible for the utilities, you become more conscientious about what, you, what you're um, using there. When will the homes be metered? We're tentatively scheduling for the installation. Probably not going to see um, actual payment of those utilities for two to three years. Will you have a deposit? and uh, cable, possibly, you would have to work with the local provider for that. Will you need renter's insurance? It's actually included. Um, renter's insurance is actually included. Um, if you wanted to per uh, purchase additional um, insurance, you know, you're welcome to do that, but, but we do include that uh, $20,000 uh, personal property, $100,000 uh, in liability with a $250,000 what happens to old inspection reports that will actually remain in your permanent file? I mean, we will be using that to clear housing when you do move out. Who is allowed to reside in the home? All persons.
terms that's listed on your lease agreement. If you have extended uh, visitors, refer to your resident guide and work with the community management office for that. Who can enter your home? Um, when you sign your lease, we have authorization to enter forms. Um, if you sign that authorization to enter, we will go into your home and service requests are um, called in. We will also be able to create a maintenance. Um, should you choose not to sign that form, service request and preventative maintenance will be scheduled uh, with you. Um, obviously, in the event of an emergency, we're going in. So. Can your pets stay? Um, yes, we will ask for you to register all of your pets with the community management office. You can have up to two pets per household. Um, there is no pet deposit, which is which is nice. So, um, yes, your pets will be allowed to stay. If you have more than two pets right now, um, you will be grandfathered in with that, all current residents. What vehicles can you park? All vehicles that are in working order. <coughs> Who will handle your service request? We will actually be my facilities team that will be taking care of that. Um, service requests can be called in. You can come in and, and see us, or you can actually uh, go online when our website is up. When we go live at um, and fill out a service request at that point. And we always ask that you provide a current contact phone number so that uh, we can call you with questions or in case of an emergency. Where will you address your concerns? Again, we're right now uh, co-located with the current housing office and we will continue to do so. Um, our phone numbers are listed up here and uh, we'll be there. And our resident programs, um, LifeWorks is a huge, huge uh, program for us and it's really what we're all about. These are just some, some photos of some different events. We will actually be taking care of the landscaping. We will be mowing um, lawns. And you will only be responsible for any type of things. So the toy um, questions, uh, we will actually take care of the inside of the as well. We actually had a question this morning. Um, for those of you that like to do landscaping, it's part of your city. You can definitely let us know and we'll allow you to do that. You will be surveyed probably to death. Um, our military families <laughs> tend to get surveyed a lot. So these are some different uh, survey cards that will be distributed when you move in, when you move out, as service requests are completed. Um, okay. We're going to ask for your opinions. And that concludes the briefing. Again, we're available for questions. Um, we'll be available for individual questions as well. Um, and thank you very much. We're really looking forward to being here and uh, looking forward to a long, long lasting, great relationship. Any questions? Comments? Um, concerns? All right, this is your opportunity. So that's the whole reason we're doing this town hall. So we decided to ask questions.
rinse up option is it's a it's a process. It's um, something that can affect um, occupancy. It's something that can affect the the homes that are available for military members that are coming in. So it's something that is an option, but it's a detailed process to have that option available. You don't want to just anybody can come in and say, oh, I want to run up to a cosmetic We have specific steps or long process that to get there because we have to ensure that we have the homes available for those military members. Each, each situation we look at case, right? we as a leadership team, we work with about our community on each one and we look at it. So I can be a common
There was a concern also brought up this morning that uh, after the fact that some people were because of the light work that some of the programs were going to put on, that that would affect some of our programs that we provide through Sports and Sports Water, CCU Center, Cameron Family. That is not the case. This is an additional program that we provide that families can go to and use. But those are the programs that we have are funded by the Air Force Support Program. So they're separate programs. This is, a, this is an additional benefit. To work together on those types of things as well. So, um, wherever we can lend a hand, we would love to do that and partner up on different events. So, it's definitely a partnership as far as that goes. So. Good, good question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Um, now, we, we we're on deployment orders. Do we, um, are we still uh, penalized for that one month? No, no, there's a military clause in the uh, in the lease agreement that we just have that we have received proper notice during the notice. Uh, your grandfather, the key guy is is communication. So when you get a PCS order, you get these water for your employee business. The key is to get a three days notice so you basically get the house ready.
the arts and a lot of other things that people assist you with as well. So then just reach out for your help.